Mike Tyson, Fats's favorite boxer. I can say that, right? He's my Donny. He's your Donny. He's yeah. literally my Donny. I think she, he's genuinely her favorite boxer. So, yeah. Um, yeah, looking forward to reacting to this. We ain't done it yet. It is called Mike Tyson's Punch That Terrified the World. Wow. Let's get into it. 90s with great force, Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock were not just the protagonists of a fight, but of a war that would unfold in two battles in the ring and a parallel one to determine who was the number one contender in the discipline. Highlighting the best and worst moments of each, our invitation is for you to stay until the end of the video oh. and join us on this journey filled with deadly left hooks, controversial low blows, and much excitement even after the bell signaling the end of the contest. The extensive battle between Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock would begin on March 18, 1991, with the Mirage Hotel and Casino Ring in Las Vegas as the battlefield. The fight would be supervised by the critical eyes of judges Jerry Roth, Chuck Jampa, and Dave Moretti, and controlled by the wisdom of referee Richard Steele. Tyson would enter the scene as the number one heavyweight contender in the World Boxing Council, World Boxing Association, and International Boxing Federation. There was great anticipation for the fight simply because Donovan Ruddock was the next in line. Ruddock's professional record at 27 years old was 25 victories, 18 by knockout, one defeat and zero draws. Solid records, especially back then where losses were more normal. Um, one loss, that's nothing for that kind of record. Tyson at only 24 had 39 victories, 35 by knockout and Oof. one defeat. As the bell rang, the first round began and Tyson leaped from his corner with the characteristic aggressive fighting style that made him nearly unstoppable at that time. With his body already absorbing powerful combinations of punches, Ruddock sought to land effective counterattacks without neglecting his guard to neutralize Damn. Iron Mike's severe offensive. Throwing a big punch, he stumbled after the punch. It's done something, it's stopped Iron Mike. An associate minister lets them know. When Mike Tyson lands a punch clean, I feel it through the screen. Even though this is like very bad quality in terms of the recording because it's old, I can still feel it. <laughs> I can hear it like a shotgun. Doesn't seem to care. A hard shot yes. punch by Tyson. That... We... Ruddock would go down early in the second round after receiving a powerful left hook that temporarily weakened his legs. Defended by Ruddock. Despite Damn. surpassing the safety count, he demonstrated that he had much more to offer before being declared defeated. Showing that the previous round was no fluke, Tyson would knock down Ruddock once again during the third round. After engaging in close combat with his rival for most of the episode, with less than 10 seconds remaining, another powerful left hook would send Ruddock to the canvas. Wow. See, whenever he got hit, he acted like it wasn't all that. But it was all but that. But it was all that. Yeah. And that one, he tried to act straight away, but then next thing you know, his legs just shut down. Notice how Tyson just goes straight for his opponents. Yeah. And his opponents are always dancing They're always around, trying to run out. away. They don't, he's like, you ain't going nowhere. You can't run away from Tyson. He corners you. Yeah. He locks you in. Mm -hmm. He's locked in, boy. The audience couldn't believe what was happening, and it was evident on Ruddock's face that he, too, didn't fully comprehend the situation. <laughs> Showing readiness to continue at the count of eight, the bell allowed him to return to his corner Lucky. and rethink his strategy before Tyson proved that the third time is the charm. Despite staying on his feet, the fourth and fifth rounds wouldn't necessarily be Ruddock's resurgence. Tyson, seemingly punishing him mercilessly like a medieval executioner, applied enough pressure for his opponent to break at any moment. He's got to get his fire going again. Steel. One. Tyson's promoter, Don King. Oh, the uppercut. He's done. Despite actively seeking to inflict some damage with his counterattacks, Ruddock had trouble landing a significant blow on Iron Mike's body, who appeared to be very close to achieving his goal, victory. Tyson opened the sixth round by pushing Ruddock back against the ropes, a move that would be repeated more than once within the time limit marked by the bell. Throwing punches with decreasing certainty, Ruddock began to resemble a punching bag for a fighter who didn't mind breaking his soul with punches, if necessary, to secure a knockout victory. Who continues to stay on his oh. 
He's been knocked out twice. Three. Combination by Mike. Ending his ordeal in the seventh round, Tyson finally positioned Ruddock against the ropes to deliver the most deadly combination of punches he had received in his entire professional career. After moving toward the center of the ring, it seemed that Iron Mike's attacks had ceased until a second flurry of punches made Donovan Ruddock dance like a puppet colliding with the ropes, at which point Richard Steele knew he had given his all and was not in a condition to continue. Oh, he is like a puppet. <laughs> Mike Tyson. He just molds, molds him. Like, just the power behind those shots are different. And this guy was the next up. He wasn't no rookie. He was like the one that they thought was gonna beat Tyson, and he's the next. I mean, one. they've done a lot of rounds. Six. You know what? Ratings to him to even survive that long because yeah. other people are getting knocked out round one. Tyson defeated Donovan Ruddock by technical knockout at 2 minutes and 22 seconds of the seventh round. Seventh Far round. from being the end of the war, it would be only one of the two battles that both fighters would engage in to determine who was the ultimate champion. In parallel, while the fighters shared a friendly embrace, their corners decided to start their own battle, creating a true chaos in the boxing ring. Had to really Having to separate the contenders, fearing they might get involved in the riot, one of the most unsportsmanlike scenarios in the history of the sport unfolded. Far from accepting defeat by the great Mike Tyson, Ruddock would do everything possible to have a second chance, leading them back to where it all began, the ring at the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas on June 28th, 1991. He must have been shitting it knowing like, obviously he wanted to prove himself and fight again, but knowing how powerful Tyson is and going back to like a situation where he lost and rewinding it. The thing is, because he fought Tyson in the past. I know for a fact he trained hard mm. to make sure that he doesn't get, you know. Beat again. But he lasted a lot of rounds. Seven rounds he maybe lasted Maybe he Tyson. thought he could do it. Because maybe he thought, look, if I could last seven rounds, if I work harder, I'm sure I could beat him. Of course, him. he lasted seven rounds. I don't mm. think many people last Not that long many. with Tyson. No, max three if you're yeah. lucky. Chuck Champa would also be reprising his role as a judge, joined by Dalby Shirley and Art Lurie. This time, it would be referee Mills Lane's task to ensure the fight took place as cleanly as possible. Adding a victory to the previously mentioned record, Tyson raw. once again presented himself as the number one contender in the World Boxing Council, World Boxing Association, and International Boxing Federation. Ruddock, who would add a loss to his record, remained the next in line. However, he maintained hope that this time he would succeed in overcoming Iron Mike. After the bell rang, the first round of one of the most anticipated rematches for the general public began. From the very beginning, Tyson adopted his explosive fighting style, making it clear to Ruddock that he had to approach him with a different offensive if he didn't want to achieve the same result. Oh. As if it were deja vu, Ruddock would go down in the second round after receiving a powerful right hook. Getting up immediately, he only allowed Iron Mike, who seemed out of control, to continue punishing My him God. without showing any mercy. He's like a wild beast. Like, once he starts throwing and he lands one or two, Tyson's hands just keep going. Like, they just keep flying with so much precision and power. It's actually insane. God damn. Ruddock would taste the canvas once again during the fourth round. It was a bold left hook that made him fall backward, rising at the count of eight to demonstrate his ability to continue the fight. Clean. From this point on, the fight stabilized, with occasional attacks from Ruddock trying to cause enough damage to slow down or deteriorate the cruel offensive Tyson maintained in each completed round. Closing the eighth episode, Mills round Lane eight. deducted a point from Ruddock after, knowingly, he hit Tyson after the bell rang. His chances of winning the fight were becoming slim, and his decision to disrespect the time limits only demonstrated the helplessness he felt in being dominated a second time by the- He looks exhausted. Tyson looks cool. That's the, that's the thing with Tyson. He don't get tired either. No. Power, accuracy, 
And he'll fight in round nine the same way he would fight in round one. Stam is very good. It's too much energy, man. Iron Mike Beast. Oh, Tyson, not being the cleanest fighter in the contest, also suffered a point deduction imposed by Lane after, during the ninth and 10th rounds, he allowed controversial low blows to land on his opponent. With both pugilists giving their best, this time, the level of forces remains sufficiently balanced to allow them to reach the end of the originally agreed upon 12 rounds. After the bell signaling the end of the contest, the decision of who would be awarded the victory would depend on each judge's perspective regarding who set the pace of the fight and who submitted to it. When the announcer took center ring, the moods were truly heated. Leaving just enough intrigue to generate more excitement, he soon announced that the result was a unanimous decision in favor of Mike Tyson. You know what I think I noticed about Tyson? I feel like on the videos we've reacted to already in the past as well, whenever there's a fighter that doesn't get knocked out in the first three rounds, when it starts getting to like five, six plus, he gets quite frustrated and the way he throws his punches is becomes a lot more reckless. Like. And I feel like that's probably a bit of frustration that he, why is this guy not like, going go down? down man. Like, how's this guy not going down? Yeah, I'm that's getting annoyed. That's why he started doing the low blows. Yeah. So I think you're not allowed low blows. No, of course, it's you're punching someone's dick basically by accident. That's fucked. Like, obviously, I don't think he done it deliberately. I could be wrong, but I feel like because he's so frustrated, he's just throwing with less precision and more anger. That unfortunately, he's actually like he's going for the body shot, but he's accidentally hitting him towards his or towards his balls or whatever. But I think he gets frustrated. That's that's my theory. Like two gentlemen, both fighters shook hands, shared a hug, and exchanged a few words, putting an end to a rivalry that extended for months, even though Donovan Rudda couldn't mm. remove the thorn of joining the few who defeated the great Iron Mike. Two battles with similar outcomes but different endings, demonstrating the art of knowing how to lose beyond knowing how to win. If you've made it this far, we can only thank you for joining us in reliving two of the most significant encounters in the journey of Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock in the discipline.